Hi, I'm Justin Kirk, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this fireball. So before we get started, I'd just like to encourage you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. The first thousand people that subscribe are going to get a free copy of the game, and they're also going to get a unique spell card. So you can see in the bottom left, I have this spell card called Light, and what it is is when you press R on your keyboard, it does the spell on the card. Now this one just kills everything in the room, but there's so far there's like 15 spell cards and uh, yeah, you'll be able to get a unique spell card that nobody else will be able to get after a thousand people subscribe. So uh, anyway, so let's get started on making the fireball. Okay, so let's just make a folder here and we'll call this fireball tutorial. Okay, so the first thing you need to do to make a fireball like this is to draw a picture like this. So it needs to be, what you can do is you turn down the opacity of the brush, use, use paint. If you're using uh, Autodesk Sketchbook, you can use the actual paint brush and just turn down the opacity all the way to like pretty much zero. And then you just make circles. And then on the outsides of the circle, you go over only a couple times. And then in the middle of the circle, you go over more times. It needs to be like kind of transparent. I'm just gonna upload this this picture to the video so you could just download mine if you don't want to do that but uh, you know I encourage you to make your own one thing you could do to maybe make this better is use an eraser and cut out some parts of it and make it more into like a flame shape we don't we don't really need to do that the way that it turned out is really good but it's up to you if you want to do that or not anyway uh, so after you're done um, drawing something like this all you have to do is drag it from your downloads folder or wherever you have it into your folder at the bottom then you need to click on it go to the texture type and change it to a sprite and then press apply okay so after you've made your picture of the fireball that you're going to use you just need to right click at the bottom here and go create visual effects visual effects graph and you could just call yours fireball i'm going to call mine fireball tutorial because i've already made a fireball and i'm remaking it so i've already used that name um, so if you don't have visual effects graph when you go to right click, if you click window and go to pa package manager, you can install this through the package manager. So like, uh, if you just click on this drop down here, click unity registry, and then just type in visual and it should be one of the results. I've already installed it. So mine says remove, but yours should say install in the bottom right. And you could just install it and then it should show up in that, uh, drop down. So after you've made this, let me just go ahead and delete this. You can drag this into the scene like this. And then if you double click on it, it should zoom in on it and you can see like the particles. So now if we double click this at the bottom here, you should get this graph that pops up and we can use this to edit this. So if you've never edited the, or used the visual effects graph before, it's very similar to the particle system, but it has a lot more options. And by default, uh, the visual effects graph uses the video card instead of the CPU. So you can generate a significantly higher number of particles and there's just a there's a lot more options available than the um very similar to shader graph where you have like all the nodes that you can mess with and stuff like that so after you're done going into this uh just you can just drag it out and make it as big as you can while you can still see the particles and then after you do this you just want to drag your picture into this slot at the bottom here where it says main texture most of these fields are really simple so you can just read them to find out what they do so constant spawn rate this is how many particles are coming out per second this the capacity is how many like the maximum of particles the velocity is like the direction that they're going the lifetime is how long they last before they disappear like all, all of this stuff is very very common sense it's just english you could just read it and find out what it does so the first thing we want to do is you could change this to like 500 and then change the capacity to 15,000. even if you have like a relatively bad computer as long as you have a video card this should be fine on my computer i can spawn like a million particles and it, it won't even lag at all it's fine so anyway so that's the first step of this so we want to change the velocity. We don't want it to be going up like this. We want it to go to the left. So there'll be a big ball at the front and then like a trail of particles behind it. So to do this, we want to be able to edit this in the inspector because after we're in the game and we mess with it, we're going to want to change some of the settings. So the first thing we want to do is create a vector three. So if you don't see this blackboard, if you click in the top right here where it says blackboard, this will enable and disable the blackboard. So just turn on the blackboard, click the plus, and at the bottom click vector three, double click on this. And this is going to be the minimum particle speed. And then we're going to make another vector three. It's going to be the maximum particle speed. Okay, so the minimum particle speed can be one, one, and one. And then the maximum particle speed can be 25, five, and five. So what we want to do is in this set velocity random per component, we want to drag in these numbers. So you can drag from your blackboard into this, and then you can drag from each thing to the A and the B value. And you can see that this kind of like shoots all these particles to the left, which is exactly what we're looking for. We 
probably want the Y to be up and down, but let's uh, let's worry about that in a second. So then the next thing we want to do is we don't want these particles spawning at a point. So like they're all spawning at this exact point right here, but we want the top of it to be rounded like a circle, right? So we want to conform the particles to a sphere before we add the velocity. So if we type in sphere here, you can set the position of the particles to an arc sphere. And if you put this at the top below velocity random, this will make it so that these are in a circle. You can change the radius of the circle where they're spawning. So if you click on the arc sphere and you click on the sphere, you can change the radius. So you can make it like five if you want to. And it just spreads out the particles. And we're not going to make it five because that's too big but I can maybe make it like two or something. So the other thing I noticed is that these particles are going up only, but not down. So we want to change this between negative five and five instead. And instead of negative five and five, maybe negative two and two, and then negative two and two. So obviously the x-axis is the left. If you're unsure of what axis you're working on, you can look at the top right corner of your um, scene view or whatever. Scene view, yeah, I think that's what it's called. So X is left or whatever, Y is up and down, and then Z is left and right. So we just wanna make, um, if this is just a positive number, then it will only go upwards. It won't go upwards and downwards. So you can use um, a range of like negative two to two is fine. So then we just want to add some size to this. So let's add a set size node. And we want this to be a random. So if you add a node here and you don't see the random option, if you move your VFX graph to the left, you can, when you click on this, you get options on the right here. You can change. So for example, if it's on overwrite, if you have any size added to the particle before this, it will overwrite that. So you can change this to add or multiply or whatever you want to do. And then for random, you can just change this to per, compo uh, per component. And this will change the size of each particle to a random number between these two numbers. So the numbers that we want are going to be 35 and 45. Okay. And like I said, the reason this isn't working or changing anything is at the bottom we have set size over lifetime, which is overwriting. So even though we're setting the size here, this is getting overwritten by set size over life. We can just delete set size over life for now. And then set color over life, you could delete that as well. We're gonna be using that probably, but we're just gonna change that however we want at the time. Uh, so this is looking really massive and we don't want it to be that big. But what we're going to do is we're going to set size over life. So you can see that the particles are the same size from their start point to the end point. But ideally for a fireball, they'll be big at the front and then at the back, they'll be small. So the reason we're leaving this so big is because when we add a set size over lifetime, it multiplies it by a decimal value and it will shrink the particles. So we're going to need to do that. So at the bottom here, if we click on one of these things and we press space, we can set size over life. We just want to change the composition from overwrite to multiply so you can kind of see how this is big at the beginning and then it becomes like smaller at the end so i think this is the last custom scale that i use for this you can copy this if you want so i think this number would be 0 0.25 0 0.25 you just have to uh, this might be a pre-made one i'm not sure but you just have to drag this up so it starts not all the like it doesn't start at the full size it gets a little bit bigger and then it shrinks all the way down to zero you could even make this less than zero so like if you wanted you could uh oh no that invalidates it i guess you can't multiply it by negative but uh yeah so this is already starting to look like a fireball so this is only the first part of the fireball though so the next part will be the smoke and then we have sparks that are coming out of the fireball so, so what we need to do is we actually need to uh, set color over life. And I'm just going to guess the colors for now, but I have really good colors in my other one that I'm going to show you before we finish this. So I'm just going to make this like really orange. And then if you set the intensity of this, it will glow. So you can like make it glowy just by dragging the intensity. And then maybe at the end, this could be like a red color for the end of the trail so that it becomes orangey at the end. And if we want the trail to be more red, we can add a point here, like kind of halfway through and set it to red here. That's actually looking pretty interesting. And then maybe this could be black instead of red. Uh, maybe this is just the wrong color of red. Let's just turn the intensity off on this. And then you could play with the bar if you want to. So like I said, I'm not going to be going too crazy with these colors. At the end of the trail should probably be more orange. So we could make this like a little bit more orange than that. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. So like I said, I'm not going to be spending too long on this. 
but this is how you can change the colors i probably spent hours may maybe like an hour messing with the colors it's just fun like you could just change the color and see what it changes it to and that kind of stuff also the multiply size over life it might be better if this starts the max size that way the front of it is the biggest part or even it could be like even higher so like you know, like you can make the front of your fireball bigger just by dragging up this thing. If you click on this point, you can make it more smooth, like the transition by just turning this. That's looking pretty awesome. And then the very, very front of this. So like right here. So let me turn down the intensity of this one right here to like three or something, right? And then just for a second here, we could have the color be like kaboom bright, you know? Not too bright because it will like uh, be too flashy on your eyes or whatever. But anyway, we're just gonna leave that for now. So you can mess with the, the multiply size over. Obviously, make the fireball how you like it. You don't have to copy the exact fireball that I have. These options are very easy to edit. You just click on it and just pick the settings that you like. You can make it green. You can make it blue. You can make it whatever color fireball you want, right? It's your fireball, so just change it however you like. I'm just gonna leave what I have here because it's pretty cool. So the next thing we want to do is we actually want to make smoke for the particle so when we're done messing with this particle system we can just highlight everything press Control c Control v make a copy of it and then we need to copy uh, we need to make smoke for this so i'm also going to upload this um smoke that i've made to the video as well let me just go back to my fireball tutorial Oh, that's my actual fireball. So I didn't actually make this. This is something that I found on the Unity website for free. I'm still going to post it to the video, but there's uh, it, it's just something that Unity offers for free. So like if you go into the Unity Asset Store, they have a lot of stuff that they just give away for free. I think that I either found this in the Asset Store or I found it on Unity's actual website. And they have a bunch of different smoke ones that are available. So yeah, you can check that out if you want to. It's just, just go on Google and type in Unity Asset Store and you can get a lot of free stuff like that. So... Let's go ahead and delete the color over life and let's delete the size over life. And then we just want to drag this disk smoke 01 into the field where our fireball texture was in the first one. The next thing we want to do is if we click on the VFX graph in the, uh, in the bottom part or down here on the right here, this is the order that the things are getting generated. We want the smoke to get generated first and the fire second. That way we can see the fire over top of the smoke. And you can see how this is like turned out kind of like crazy, right? And that's because this is called a texture sheet. It's 16 by four and it even denotes that. So we need to change the UV mode from default to flipbook. And you can change the X from four to 16 and the Y is uh, four. So we want the size to be significantly less. This is like, obviously this is too big. It's taking, it's like bigger than the, the thing and it doesn't look normal so just change this to like 10 to 15 maybe um so when you change this it should instantly change in here as well and then we want to change the lifetime as well so this is too long let's change the lifetime to let me just move this up here um the lifetime can be like 0.1 to 0 0.6 okay and then we just want to add scale to this before we set the size so these particles in this um sheet you can see that they're like kind of vertical up and down, but the particle that we're putting in is a square, right? So we don't want a square particle for these that are like, they're, they're bigger, like they're not, they're not a square, so they need to be larger. So we're going to add the um, scale to it so that the specific axis, the axis for the Y is bigger because the Y axis here is wrong, right? It looks like it's uh, it's, so it's doing a square instead of a rectangle and these are rectangles. So we need to make it into a rectangle. So right at the beginning here before the set size, we need to set the scale and just set all of these to zero except for 0.5 in the Y and then click on set scale and change it from overwrite to add. So we're adding 0.5 in the Y axis, change the orientation of the smoke. So right now it's looking at the camera. We don't actually want that. And we don't want this to be facing the camera plane either. We want it to face the camera position. Um, so change this from face camera plane to along velocity. What this will do is it will orient the smoke so it's facing the direction that it's going. Okay, so we're not able to see this. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. So let's make it 15 to 25 and just see if we can see it. So the radius, we're just gonna set to five. And then the transform, see how this is in front of the fireball? 
we don't really want this to be in front of the fireball. We want it to be to the left of the fireball. So, oh, it's probably the where the object actually is. So let's just change this to five. So you can see when we change this number, it moves the sphere, like where the smoke is coming from. And we just want it to be coming from like just in front of the tip. And then this is still, this is too big. So let's just turn this down again. Let's move it back to 10 to 15 because we moved it to the uh, left. It should be coming out the bottom now. So you'll be able to actually see it. And it's not supposed to overpower the fireball. It's supposed to, um, my sphere here. So if I remove that and I remove that, then it's in the ground now. So if I take, oh, it's because my other one was inside of a game object. So let's create an empty game object here and just drag your fireball inside of the game object. And then you can name this fireball prefab. And then when you want to move the fireball, you'll just move the prefab and not that. And that's also like, we'll be adding the collider and stuff to that as well. Okay, so we need to change the color of it. So let's go ahead and press space bar and just set color over life. And this can be very similar to the other one. Like you can make the smoke color whatever you want to. So for the beginning part of it, it could be more of like an orange. And then at the very end, it should be black. Oops. And then maybe this can have full alpha for the entire way. And then the black part can be bigger. So we want it to be black for longer. And then the speed of this should maybe be changed to go a little bit faster in the X so that it's like um, going over top of like all of the thing because it looks like it's only going in the front here. So we just want to change the speed. You can add velocity. So just go ahead and add velocity. And then it's going to be in the, in the X axis. So you could do like 15 for now. And instead of doing that, let's turn that off for a second and just change the life to 1.5. Okay, and then the front of this, let's just go ahead and crank the intensity. Yeah. So like I said, you can play with these numbers to make it like really cool. So just like, like I said, I spent forever messing with this. Um, you might make this red or something or because that I mean that kind of looks pretty cool and then it has like a contrast of colors that are mixing together and then the black part could maybe be like a little bit smaller like that um like I said you can you can mess with this however you want to I'm not going to spend a lot of time messing with the colors because I already did that on my other one and I like the way that it looks so that's pretty much it for that and then we just have one last thing that we need to add to this so the next thing is going to be sparks so let's go ahead and we could just copy this one again and paste it and this is called sparks. So let's lower this number to maybe like 25. And the smoke can actually be a little bit less. Maybe make this 250. So just make it half of your initial. So the fireball is 500. So make the smoke like significantly less than that. So maybe even 150. So obviously the lower numbers you use, the the better, like the better performance you're gonna get with it. And if you can get away with using lower numbers and it looks the same or it looks even better maybe, definitely do that because it just like it's better performance there's no reason to have too many so this is sparks the number needs to be like really low it's gonna be 25 and then we need to actually send these further this is going to be completely different so let's get rid of the min and max particle speed and these are going to be their own thing so let's try uh, negative 50 let me zoom in on this so you can see it negative 50 in all the axis and then 50 in all the axis okay cool and we want these to be really small so maybe like five and ten all right and then we want to add scale to this because we want them to be stretched so let's just add uh, set the scale if we can oops add scale so make it zero on all of them and then just if you put five in the x no that's the wrong way five in the y oh you know what the reason is is we got to change this to a long velocity so at the bottom instead of face camera position change this to a long velocity and then we want to add the scale afterwards. So I think it's it's either X or Z, I can't remember. No, it's definitely not X. Y? Yeah, let me just see what Z does. Z doesn't do anything, okay. So it's Y. Okay, so we're gonna set the scale to two for Y. We're gonna add two Y to the scale. And then we just wanna make this way smaller. So just make it one to two for now. One to four. 
Okay, and then just maybe turn up the particles to like 35. You can change down the capacity to 1500. Your capacity should not be, you shouldn't make it massive just to encompass it, okay? Because it can, um, it will load based on as if it's gonna reach that amount. So the performance impact will be based on the capacity. So if you make a huge number, like if you set this to a million, it will um, conserve the memory as if it's gonna use a million particles, even if it doesn't use a million particles. So just be careful that you're not setting the capacity like massively high for no reason, that it's never gonna hit that amount anyway. The size over life here, this can be deleted. Okay, so they need to be way smaller. So let's just do like 0.3 to 0.9 maybe. And then we'll just change this to like 1.5 and see how that goes. Okay, and then we could change the color. Instead of doing a color over lifetime, we could do random color. So let's make this additive first. And then let's press spacebar and then add, um, sorry, random color, set random color. So then just drag this to the bottom and we'll just make this a random color between red and orange. No, that's like rainbowy. We don't want that. Uh, maybe black? No, we want the sparks to be really bright. Change this to yellow and then just turn up the intensity a lot. Let's get rid of that altogether. Maybe we'll just do set color over life actually because then we can fade it in and out. So in the color over life, we just want to move these bars towards the middle so that these are just kind of like a flare that so this is the alpha so the top part the alpha starts at zero which is like the transparency which means you can't see it initially and then here is where you see the particle and then it fades out this um adds a pretty good transition just make this white and then maybe it can transition to like an orange color and then the, this one at the beginning we'll just change up the intensity to be higher maybe this should be a black so it fades to black at the end. We'll put another key here so it fades to black for like a longer period of time. And then maybe we can move this over. Uh, well, the black is not vid. Oh, it's because it's additive. Make it alpha instead. Okay, and then just change this back to orange actually. And then this can be the same color. And then the orange can have intensity too. Yeah, that's looking pretty sweet. Okay, so that's it for the first part of the fireball. So this is the actual fireball that's gonna launch. Play with the numbers all you want. Like you could change this maybe lower. That might be too many sparks. Maybe 15 would be better or something where it's not like when you're playing that this is, that's like a lot of sparks that are flying out or whatever. It won't lag, it's just, it's just too much. So then we can close out of this. So then the next thing we need to make is the explosion when it hits the wall. So let's move this over here for now and let's create another um, VFX graph. So click create and then VFX graph. Okay, and we'll just call this fireball explosion tutorial. And then the same thing, um, let's put it into another, actually this doesn't, it doesn't need to be in a game object, just drag it in here like this. So this one's a little bit different, it's just gonna be an explosion, okay? So let's move it up a little bit and over and we'll double click on it the same way we did before. And then we just need to double click on the VFX graph and then we need to set it up. So the first thing is for an explosion, we don't want a constant spawn rate. So we wanna just delete this at the top here and just press space and just type in burst and do a single burst. You can make this like 500 particles and change the capacity to 5,000. Okay, and then we need the same kind of deal where we're gonna have a minimum and a maximum speed. So just click the plus and go to vector three again, and we'll call this min speed, and then another vector three for max speed. We want this to be like a ring. So instead of a sphere, cause like a sphere is like rounded, right? We actually just want a circle. So instead of the arc sphere, just click space and we can just do circle. It's the same kind of deal. Oops, that's not it. Set position arc circle. Okay, and this has an angle of 90. So if you don't set the angle to 90, the circle will be vertical. So that's why we're setting that angle to 90. And then the radius of this can be pretty small. We're gonna change that after the fact. So let me just see. So then we wanna drag in our min and our max speed here. Like this. So our min speed can be 40, 40. And then our max speed can be 70, 70. No, that's going up. We don't want that to go up like that. Okay, 
So we want to multiply these values by um, by the current position of the particle. So it's okay. So this node sets this node sets the position of the particles to a circle. Then we want them to inherit the like the position of where they are and use that as the velocity. So if we right click over here, we can uh, get the position, and then we can take both of these nodes. Let's delete these, and we will multiply them by. like this so then this one can go in the top and this one can go whoops in the bottom oh i'm setting this into the lifetime random crap that's my bad set into the velocity it makes more sense okay so when you press save you can see that these go absolutely flying that's way too fast so we just need to change some of the settings first and then we'll do this like we'll fix it after so just press spacebar here and just set the size the size can be, so click on it and go to the right and just turn on random per component. So this is random per component. And then change this to six and we can leave 0.1, that's fine. So let's save it again and see what happens. Okay, the lifetime random can be between 0.2 and 0.4. Okay, and then we're just gonna change this count to 5,000. I will change the capacity to like 50,000 and then we just need to put okay so the reason we can't really see anything is because we need to drag our fireball thing into the main texture here so when we do this there we go it's starting to look more like a fireball now so let me see this is still looking pretty small oh the reason it's not big is because we still have these stupid things at the bottom let's go ahead and delete them so get rid of the the set size over life and color over life and then when you set them when you save it should look like like this and this could even be like a little bit faster so just change this to like a hundred that's perfect so this top number like this is the size of the diameter is affected by this so if you set this to like 90 for example the ring will be really thin and if you set this to 40 or like a lower number the ring gets like thicker we want it to be a thick ring because it's like a fireball ring right and it doesn't need to last very long because you're shooting a bunch of these fireballs in my game and when it hits the wall we just want it to blow up pretty much instantly and uh yeah so then we just need to add color to this so the color needs to be very similar to the other color so just color over life is fine it's the same this is fine for the thing just make it yellow and turn up the intensity and then you can make this one maybe like an orange or something i don't know let me just see what happens when we save this Maybe even darker though, like maybe the orange should start here and then there should be black or something. And then this can be, like we don't really need to fade this out, I guess. So let's just leave it like that. See how it kind of goes black at the end? That's kind of cool. Let's actually make that orange instead and turn the intensity. No, that's way too high, but let's see. No, we don't want intensity on the last one. Turn this down. Uh, the outro can maybe be red to orange. Um, just leave that all the way to there. Okay, so that's gonna be good enough for that for right now. Okay, so we need to make another one that's gonna be the smoke. So let's go ahead and copy this particle system and we'll just do this and then it's the same kind of deal where we just need to drag in this disc smoke thing into the thing and then change this to flip book make it 4 by 16 and then change the lifetime from this just make it like uh, 0 0.7 to point to 1 so that would last a little bit longer right and then we want the smoke to be black instead so let's just change this from this to black actually this can start out yellow like that but then it needs to go black relatively quickly um we can switch these so this could be like an old dark orange color like that and then it doesn't need to go in a ring or maybe it no it doesn't need to go in a ring like this so it can do this and then we'll set this to negative five across the board and then five 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 and then we just want to make this bigger so like make it 25 maybe 
Oops. Uh, let me just control Z this. We do want to enter ring actually. So we want to orient this along velocity instead because they're smoke particles, right? And then we want to set the size to something bigger. I'll change the count to only 500. That's way too much. And just change this down to like 5,000. Just run it again. Okay, and then the lifetime can be less than that. That's too much lifetime. So let's just do like 0.7. It just needs to be slightly longer than the fire. So then the next step is the same thing as before. When you click on the explosion here, you just need to reorganize the output render order so that you actually see the explosion over top. So that's looking good. We just want to turn down the visibility of the particle. So hang on. So this is the smoke one. Let's just turn the whole thing to black. And let's turn the visibility down so it's only in the middle, like that. Oh, we need to make another key at the end here, which is nothing. So it's just barely visible. Maybe a lower number of particles would be better. So let me just do 100 and see how that looks. Yeah, that way it doesn't overpower. Like, it's not a, like it's not enough explosion. It's too much um, smoke. And then this could also be maybe white in the first frame so that it's kind of like a gray smoke. And then this could be darker like this. Let me see how that looks. So then even more so. So let me set this to black here. And then this can be like that maybe. The front should be orange like that. And then the black should be less than that. And then the front part can actually be glowy too. Why not? First part of this explosion should be an orangey color. And then we can get rid of these orangey colors. And this can just be like a yellow. It's pretty intense. Whoa. So this needs to be actually orangier, like that. And it will go orange to here, like that. And we'll just take out the intensity from that too. And then the end can be red. That's too much red. Let me make it less red than that. No, it needs to be like, be like dark orange like that. Let me save that. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. Okay, so then the last thing that we need is sparks. So we can just copy this system again. And then at the bottom, just change the disc smoke back to the fireball. I should probably should have just copied the first one instead of the middle one and change the UV mode to default again. And then we just want to change this to maybe like 25 for now. And then this shouldn't be a circle. This should just go everywhere like random. So we'll change this to negative 50. That might be too much. Hang on, let's see. Okay, let's save this. Okay, and then we just need to drag the fireball into it instead of the uh, texture sheet or animation or whatever. And then these need to be significantly smaller. So just make it 0.1 to one. That's too small. So just make it uh, one to five. Um, okay, so let's set the scale the way we did before. So if we just click here, we can add scale and then just add zero and we'll add two to the Y. Okay, and 50 is not enough. Let's make it 100. And the size is too big, so make it one to two. Actually, make it 0.2 to two. And the scale could just be slightly longer too. And two is too much, so just make it to one. Okay, and so the last thing to do is to change this. Actually, this is looking pretty good. 
Make it pretty, yeah, pretty intense, not too intense. Oh, um, right at the very, very beginning, there should be a flash for the explosion. So you can add that as well. So hang on. So then one last particle system, or not particle system, the effect system at the beginning here. Just make this a rate of um, 50. That doesn't need to be a lot, okay? And then just at the very bottom here in the color, we're just gonna do alpha zero for, actually no, okay, set the alpha to 255 to 255 here. And just right at the very beginning, we want the rest of this to just be zero. So just zero there, zero here, perfect. So right at the beginning, we just wanna make this like full intensity and make it like yellow so that you get this flash effect. Let me see if that works. Okay, so we actually want this to be at the end, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. So this is the fireball. So we, we get that drawn second last and then this one's the, the explosion. So that's the last one. And then this is the smoke and these are the sparks. They don't matter their, um, with their order or whatever. So we do it like that. You can see this adds like a huge flash to the beginning of it and it makes it really explode. Um, so that's it for the explosion. Like I said, you can mess with like the colors a lot on this. There's no real limit to this. You can make it a green fireball. You can make it whatever color fireball you really want to. I think this looks really, really incredible. So then the last thing you need to do is make a script to actually fire the fireball. Um, I'm just gonna show you mine. I don't know if you have a game or not when you're making this. So if you've made these, it's great. So to instantiate the fireball, this is what I'm doing. Um, let me go to my player attack script. So it's kind of a big script, so I'll just apologize in advance. So you don't need to have this player holding bomb thing. It's part of a static class. So when you get mouse zero, this is left click. It plays an animation to trigger like the character swinging his wand or whatever. And then inside of that animation, there's an event that's attached to the animation and the event does this attack script. So then it checks all the player's attacks, modifiers, and that kind of stuff. And then it checks if I have this item, Firefly, then this instantiate code is what actually does like the attack for me. So I'm just passing this name of the prefab into it. And then this is my instantiate code. So we're setting the start location of the fireball based on my player's position. Again, player is a static class where I'm saving like a bunch of variables about my character. So you would just make a vector three where you want the fireball to start. The quaternion is the rotation of the fireball. You can just set this to whatever you want it to be. Mine's set like this. But if you go to instantiate this and it's the wrong direction, you can just change these numbers to change the direction. And then I'm loading my asset from my attacks folder. So I have like a prefab folder with attacks in it. And then I have the fire attack prefab here. So what you can do is you just change this fireball name. Uh, and you can drag this prefab into the folder, which like you can drag this game object into the folder, which makes a prefab out of it, right? And then you can instantiate the prefab by loading it from that folder. So we have assets, prefabs, attack, prefab name dot prefab, right? So that's the folder path. So if you click on the item, you can see the path at the bottom. Assets, fireball tutorial, fireball tutorial, explosion prefab. So you can find it from there. And yeah, so then this will instantiate the, um, the attack. And then afterwards, I um, play the sound for my attack. After that's done, I apply force to the attack. So this script runs after so after it finds out or whatever because like i have things for double shot triple shot etc my code is kind of like a mess i should probably just show you how to do this in a blank script but i get the rigid body of the attack and then i set it to freeze the position of the y because i don't want this to go up or down and then i add force to it in the direction that so the forward of the direction times my player's shot speed and that's what shoots it forward. And then I have this spell script that's attached to the actual fireball itself and all of my materials or whatever, right? Or all of my attacks have this attached to it. So what happens is on collision enter, it runs collision code with the collider, right? My player has the firefly item. It instantiates the fire explosion prefab. And then I also have something to damage enemies in a radius of 50. So, I mean, that's it for the code. I'm not going to go too detailed into the code. You can find a script online to like, just ask chat GPT if you want to, to write a script for you that actually instantiates a, a fireball, or you can copy what I have if you want to, that's fine as well. So I hope you guys like this video. Um, like I said, mess with the, the colors if you want. I think this looks really good. I might even replace my other fireball with this one. 
But um, yeah, the end result is is incredible. It looks way better than the fireball that I that I had initially. Um, it looks like I made mine significantly smaller than this. So you could just scale down the prefab afterwards if you want to make it smaller because it doesn't make sense for my fireball to be massive. I'm probably going to have a fireball like this as a card as well. So I'll have a card that shoots a bigger version of the fireball and does more damage or whatever. But anyway, yeah, like I said, I hope you guys liked the video. And uh, if you did, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.